everybody it's your boy cj the barber prodigy here to bring to you guys a long overdue barbara haircut tutorial it's been a while and i'm sorry again i feel like i'm always apologizing to you guys it's always a lot going on on my end but yeah this cut is pretty dope this one that we'll be doing today it's the high taper or the temp fade whatever you want to call it depending on where you're from but yeah this is my most popular cut this particular one that i'm doing the guy has uh some texture in the back of his head so i thought you guys would find this interesting so rock with me and let's get into this all right so always first thing you want to do after you get them all fastened in the chair you want to go ahead and start combing the hair down or brushing it down me personally i prefer combs I feel like it is the more sanitary option because you can soak your combs in barbicide. So, and then we go in and we're gonna create the zero line. Now it's sped up just a little bit because as we was recording this, um, my son was actually my cameraman, so I had to keep stopping and starting. So I didn't want you guys to have to sit the whole time. But yeah, we're going in and we're creating all of our zero lines on every side. And then you want to go ahead and take your open blade and go up about a half an inch. And me, I like to go ahead and fade it. Fade it in. So you, you might have missed that step, but I, I did go back and fade it in with the uh, halfway open. But then we're going to take the zero guard, close blade going down, open blade going up close blade going up to blend it into the the first layer that we just made and I, I'll go through this again I know I'm going a little fast right now all right and then we open up we do, go for just the open blade for detailing and we just go in and attack anywhere that seems a little dark anywhere where it didn't look like it blended it smooth now this is the texture that I was talking about and so the best option is to always try to fade below it, but if you can't, then try to stretch the skin. And again, we're going in with our open our blade, not doing our, adding our first layer, our first guideline, about a half inch up, and as you see, closed blade, flicking out that bottom line, and halfway open. You're gonna toggle between closed and halfway open to get a, a smooth fade from zero to half an inch and as you see like I said earlier I'm stretching the skin and I got the zero guard on now and I'm going up with the open and most of my fades I do with just the zero guard as you'll see I find that it's, it's very efficient helps speed up my time and the face still come out looking smooth. And as I said in the caption, alternate between having the zero guard open and closed to fade it in the back. Every face, it's the same steps, but it may not be the same steps at the same time, if that makes sense. Like, you don't always have to go in this cut and dry order of open blade, closed blade, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you have to, you have to be versatile enough to switch it up to achieve your blend so yeah but basically it is open blade going up about a half inch and then you go in with your blade half closed alternate between half closed and closed to create that to, to blend between the zero to the half like I said I'm going through it again because I know I've been going through it a little fast on this video I'm trying to keep up with my own self and right now I got the zero guard on. I went up with it open and down with the close. And then I went, closed it and went up just about half the distance I just went to fade that in the middle. And as you can see, the client is faded on all three sides. Now we're just combing some more because I'm about to do the lineup and tie it all in together. See 
now I'm fading this beard and I usually just use the, the open blade and toggle between the, the five settings until I get a, a complete fade from zero to whatever his beard length is. Um, I believe in this video he requested that I cut his beard down some. So he wanted it done on the one guard and you'll see that come up in a little while. But as far as beard fades, you really don't need um, guards to do it. You can do it without guards. So I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying with my hose spray and give that some time to dry. And of course, assist it with the dryer. With hose spray, you always want to make sure it's dry before you start lining them up. You'll get the best results. And I like to do skin prep on my clients just to dry out any sweat, any oils, dirt, anything in the skin that would prevent them from having the cleanest lineup possible. And for this, I use Barbasol and a hot towel. But if you don't have the capabilities to do this, you can also use alcohol and a cotton swab and just dabs across their forehead, across the line, and the beard line. Right, and just massage that warm towel in, let it soak up some of the Barbasol, and I'll go at the, at the end and manually wipe the rest off. As you can see, it leaves the skin looking very clean in the area that we're about to work in, which is what you want. You want clean, dry skin when you're about to line up. You get all those oils and, and stuff. A lot of people will put lotion on and oil, and you want that kind of out of your way. You don't want anything gumming up your trimmers. All right, so I apply a second. Well, I have to apply some hose spray to the front now. I applied it to the back previously. And since he wants his beard lined up, I put a little on his beard, the top of his beard as well. And we'll go in and dry that with the dryer. And as you see, I switch between hose sprays. I use got to be glued when I feel that it calls for it on the client's skin. Like the client has skin that's really um, overly moisturized, I use the got to be glued because it's, it's, it's a stronger hose spray. But otherwise, I, I prefer the level three. And I'm just going in and attacking the line in the back with my Stylecraft Protégé trimmers. And I can put the link in, below in the description for anybody interested in buying a pair. These are my go-to trimmers. I haven't found anything that hits as hard as they hit. Especially not for the price. And as you can see, it creates a really clean line. And you don't have to attack it too much to get it. And that really, a, a sharp line really ties the fade in. So take as much time with the line as you do with the fade. Never rush line, the line up process. I'm a firm believer that half of the haircut time should be the line and the other half should be the fade. Because what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. And always make sure you're using those corners when you go around the ears. A lot of people don't think it will cut, but it actually does cut very well when you use the corners. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start attacking this, this top line. I always start from the middle and go out. Right, sorry, my cameraman was kind of missing the point. <laughs> it's okay. He, he got it back together in the end. And once you get to the end of that line on either side, you want to go ahead and start creating your sharp corners. Make sure you're never pushing clients back. Like, I always go as far out in the hairline as possible instead of taking them back in. I mean, this is 2021. We have enhancements. If, if someone is a light on the edge, but you always give them the preference. Clients that are used to having their line pushed back or want their line pushed back, they'll tell you. Otherwise, never assume that a client wants their line pushed back to where it's dark. 
So as you can see, the line is coming out real nice right about now. All right, and this is what I previously mentioned. He did want his beard cut down to a one. As I said, I usually only fade using one guard, so it's very rare that my one guard comes out. It's always the zero guard. Yeah, he wants a nice shadow effect. So a one is your best bet. You go any lower than that, you're probably gonna start seeing stubble. And of course, I cut down. Just to preserve that nice dark and not cause any stubble. So now we're gonna take our trimmers and go ahead and use, as you see, I'm using the corner to create this curve. And it's giving that nice crispy ash line, real sharp. And we haven't even put the razor to it yet. And we're gonna use the flat part of the blade to do the back line and the bottom of the beard. And what you can't hear is I'm talking to him during the video, asking him, how does he want the bottom done? Again, I, I mentioned this in previous videos. Always ask your client their preference, whether they want it at an angle or curved. And he said today that he wanted it curved. And so we're doing a curve. I'm sorry, we have some shadows. So you can't really see. All right, there it is. You can see it a little better where the curve's coming in. And I really recommend these Stylecraft Protégés. They are some of the most economically frugal clippers and trimmers to buy on the market. And look at, look at the results you get. And right, we're just repeating the steps on the other side. Just doing this curve at the bottom. And we're using the corner to do that, the top of the beard line. Trying to preserve as much of his beard as possible and not cut into it too much. And I always have them lift their head up when you do their beard line at the bottom so that you can have a good angle and not cut them with the trimmers. And another tip, when you're doing a mustache, comb the mustache through with the smaller teeth in it, in the comb. Comb them down so that your mustache hairs are all even when you trim them up. The worst thing you can do for a, a curly hair client is not comb the mustache and still try to line it up. Because they're gonna have hairs in their mouth later on after the appointment. It, it's, it's a nightmare. So definitely comb, take the time to comb those hairs down. And as you see, sometimes I go over my own work. I like to comb it as I go and make sure that I didn't miss any hairs. And see, I was saying about the textured scalp, you really want to fade below it because when you start to get into fading into the flaps, of the skin is it's extremely difficult so if possible always fade below it and so he wants the top curly so as you notice I'm using my wave whip of choice which is crown curl def curl wave and curl defining foam excuse me and I put that link below as well and I just use a twisted up comb to twist it because it's much more sanitary than the sponges Sponges carry tons and tons of bacteria, so I highly, highly recommend you guys switch to something that's cleanable. And yeah, as you see, his curls are coming out nice.
All right, in this specific client request enhancement. So I'm gonna walk you guys through my process of applying enhancements. First, I apply my KISS semi-permanent enhancement to the line. Just, just a small thin line going around this lineup to separate, to make it very distinct between his hair and his skin. As I said, small strokes, you wanna use a flat brush if possible, a wider flat brush. And don't go too low on the sides because it still needs to look natural. And if you notice that it's a little darker in some areas, take a, a brush, a small brush. I like to use a knuckle brush and brush it out. Brush it backward in the backward direction. And now I'll take my Tomb 45 color enhancement and go in and spray behind the hairs basically the, apply this color enhancement to the scalp and so that darkens up any light spots he has in his line and we'll apply this evenly on all three sides as you can see it's coming out nice already but we have one more step in the process I also like to add on a coat of hair spritz so we're gonna let this dry first so we already have hose spray underneath and I like to apply spritz on top as well to help it hold and so on top of the spritz I'm going to apply hair fibers and I don't really see a major difference when it comes to hair fiber brands. I use a generic brand and it helps, seems to hold just fine. So I put the hair fibers over the other two enhancements. As you know, hair fibers do not last as long. So, you know, be open and upfront with your client about it so they're not expecting you know it to last you know a week or two because chances are it won't and always make sure you dry it at the end and comb through it to make sure that they're in there firmly remember every skin type is different when it comes to enhancements all right so you guys miss me combing through it but when you comb through it you shouldn't see clumps of it falling out and so I like to lay them back when I'm lining them up so that I can get a full full view. Most of my clients are taller than me, so this is beneficial, especially for anybody up on the shorter side. And as you can see, it's already coming out crispy. I haven't had to add any pencils to, or anything to the ash line. Just uh, hose sprays alone are already getting the job done. And the skin prep. Skin prep is definitely important. What you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. Always stretch the skin when you're doing the beard line. And do soft downward strokes. Or in this case, when you're lining the bottom of the beard, you do upward strokes. You don't really want to go on the bottom of that neckline especially when you're dealing with African American clients because you're gonna cause razor bumps. So don't go too low. You see I stick usually to the side area. All right, and we'll go ahead and let them on up. I definitely recommend investing in a reclining chair if you don't have one. All right guys, here's the finished product. High taper fade, sharp lines, Enhancements applied at the client's request. And this is how it turns out. Pandora. If I can do it, you can do it too. Guys, let me know if this video helped you in the comment section below. As always, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell for future videos. I appreciate you guys 
staying tuned to my channel and, and supporting all my content and watching the videos. It really means the world to me. God bless and stay up.